All right, welcome everybody to another episode of uh, Bravo Plant Based Channel. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you all for being here. We're gonna do a uh, sort of a bread kind of a thing, a quinoa bread using um, plantains. So I'm gonna explain that whole process. Um, we served it here for everybody for breakfast. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around with it so that we get different flavor profiles so that you guys get more than just one idea. Sound good? Yeah. All right. I'm also going to explain how those I different ideas go together uh, so that you don't have to have necessarily the exact ingredients I'm using. So this is more of a thought process uh, and it's very simple as you'll see. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the whole quinoa thing. Uh, quinoa is more of a seed, it's not a grain, but it acts just like a grain, uh, sort of like a rice. So what happens is I have a cup here of uh, quinoa, which I would put in my pot, okay? And just like rice, this is a two to one thing. So one cup of quinoa means I need two cups of liquid. Uh, what that means is um, I would need a cup and a half of pineapple juice, as you can see here, and then half a cup of water, which would give me a total of two cups of liquid to this cup of quinoa. All right, everybody follow me so far? Okay, so then I would put it on the stove, turn it on to high and once it starts bubbling I'll put my lid on and turn the heat down to low and 24 minutes later this is done okay um, and so as you can see here I have one that's already cooked this was actually two cups of quinoa so which meant there was four cups of liquid uh, all together so I'm going to so you turn the heat down once it's bubbling. Once it starts bubbling, turn the heat down, cover it, cover it, uh, and then set your timer. Okay. Okay. So we'll set that to the side. And then I will show you the plantains. So plantains are um, in the banana family. When they are green, they are very starchy. As they ripen, as you see here, this looks like a totally overripe banana. Okay. Uh, but it's got a nice texture to it. So what happens is the starch then converts into sugar and that's uh, how we get really nice flavorful sweet plantains to cook for you guys. Uh, so we wait for them to look like this. So this, these are raw right here. Mostly brown, uh, just a light bit of yellow. Okay. Uh, and what happens is we take them, put them in a uh, baking tray in the oven okay and when they burst open 350 degrees somewhere in the 15 ish 20 ish minutes okay when they burst open they are ready okay and all we did was just put them on the on the tray we didn't do anything to them and so what you see here is two other ones as I mentioned, they were in a tray like this, and they burst it open, and they almost like to, they start to sort of come out of there, out of the uh, husk here. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And so now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna mix this up. So we're gonna make, I'm gonna make sort of like a dough kind of a thing. So this is important. The quinoa has to be somewhat still warm. Okay. If you allow it to cool down too much, uh, you won't be able to form it into a, a dough kind of a thing. Uh, once it cools down, every seed sort of breaks apart. So while it's still warm, I can work it. So I'm gonna put one of these in there. Um, I don't have a measurement for you necessarily because all plantains are gonna be different size. So if I tell you one plantain exactly, it might be the one you bake is too big or too small and it might throw you off. So this is more of a look and feel uh, for this. So I think we're in close. Okay, so both plantains go in. And then there's nothing you really can or want to do with this. That's just trash now. Okay. And so I'm looking for 
a sort of a pasty kind of a texture. And once I mash it all in, I take a sort of a little bit. And what I do is, if I can sort of roll up a ball, sort of like a like a meatball kind of a thing, almost probably the wrong thing to say, but <laughs> if I can roll this into a ball, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. You wanna then put it in a container so that you can mold it, okay? So what happens is, I'll show you here, I have this all in stages so we don't have to wait for it <laughs> too long. So I have a container here. I uh, took some of it um, and then what I did was just press it down, okay? So at this point, I prefer to use uh, see-through containers, whether it's a glass or a um, plastic. Uh, plastic kind of thing. Uh, although this is a restaurant quality, um, material um, so that when you press it down you can sort of look around and see if you got any sort of air pockets okay if you have any air pockets in here once this cools down and then you go to cut it they turn into holes okay so you want to be able to see that you pressed it down really nice okay so again all I did was then put this in a container press it down and then you wait overnight Okay. Does the thickness matter or? Uh, no, it does not matter. And okay. I'll show you uh, in a second one. Yes, sir. Do you use a tool to press it down? Uh, just a spoon. Small. Just a spoon to a spatula. That'll work as well. Okay. So uh, you allow it to cool down to sort of room temp and then you put it in the refrigerator. And then the next day, what happens is you can flip it upside down mm -hmm. to your cutting board. And you have a you know, white solid loaf, okay? At this point, then you decide, okay, I am going to cut it into whichever shape you desire, all right? For this, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some strips. here and then I'm gonna just lay it down here on my baking tray okay this then goes in the oven 350 degrees for about 20 minutes you know you want it to get a little bit of that golden brown look like you you know toasted a slice of uh, bread kind of thing um, <coughs> And then what you'll get is, you'll, you'll see these ones I cut into triangles. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I took that and just cut it diagonally, and boom, there you go. So we got this uh, triangle kind of look to it. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So at this point, because the plantains were nice and ripe and they're really sweet, and then we cooked the quinoa in that partial um, pineapple juice, the whole thing right here is sort of a sweet uh, kind of thing. So for breakfast, uh, what worked really well was to then serve it as sort of like a French toast uh, type of item, okay? And I'm gonna show you how we did that. Okay, so for the sauce that we did this morning, all we did was take some uh, fresh mangoes. So this was one mango uh, peeled diced, went in the pot, somewhere along the lines of a half a cup of pineapple juice, vanilla extract, just a pinch. You can certainly use uh, any spices you like here, cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, a little bit of star anise, um, there was a lady I met once uh, who loved coriander in every desserty kind of thing that she made. So she would put coriander in here. I'm adding some uh, vanilla extract right now. 
uh, and a touch of cinnamon, okay? You can do a little bit of pumpkin spice maybe, if that's your thing, all right? And then to make this really nice and creamy, we added some cashews to the, to the sauce. So this gives us a little bit of creaminess. Um, you can certainly uh, leave the cashews out if that's an issue for you. You can still end up with a really nice mango sauce without them. Uh, we just wanted to make it a little bit richer, a little bit uh, creamier for you guys for this morning because it's not something we serve every day. Okay. Most days, it's the nice, uh, good old oatmeal and you know, no nuts in there. So, but you know, once in a while, why not? All right, so now the trick here is to simmer this probably for about five-ish minutes, just so that it, the whole thing warms up and that the uh, cashews have a little bit of time to start softening up because we're gonna put it in the blender. Make sense? Okay. Yes. Do you soak your cashews? No, you don't soak them. They were, they were just raw. Okay. If you were to soak the cashews uh, ahead of time, you would be introducing water to the sauce, uh, thus watering it down. You could do this whole thing cold, okay? Throw everything in a container, okay? And just leave it overnight. And the next day, everything will be nice and soft. And then you just blend it and you have a cold cold sauce to go with it. If that's something that you wanted to do either for this or for something else, okay? Uh, it would work if in the morning you're like, I don't have time to wait for it to cook. I just need to blend it and go. Uh, okay. All right. Let's see. This technique that I'm showing you uh, could be a lot of different things, such as uh, right now we're... Uh, we are in uh, stone fruit season, so this could be peaches, could be apricots, could be cherries, uh, could be plums, nectarines. You can certainly do other things like pineapple, berries, you know, strawberries or other berries in there. Pears, apples, more as we get towards the winter kind of a thing, fall, winter, okay? So this is not exclusive to, you know, this will only work with mangoes, okay? It will also not be exclusive to work just with cashews. Again, cashews are nice, but you can certainly use pine nuts, macadamia nuts. So maybe you had like a uh, pineapple, diced pineapple instead of the mango, and then you do a pineapple macadamia. And now it's just sort of Hawaiian y kind of a theme dish. Okay. Um, certainly other nuts will work in there uh, pecans. Uh, Almonds, okay. I like using cashews uh, particularly because in the raw form, uh, they will add a creaminess to a sauce, to a dish, without putting a bunch of flavor, okay. If you end up using something like pecans, or walnuts, or macadamias, you will taste the flavor, okay. Uh, whereas this, if they are raw, you won't notice it. It'll just be creamy. All right, so I'm going to pretend that that was five minutes, probably not too far from that. I'm gonna stick it in the blender, and we're gonna make a sauce out of it. Okay. So, I'm going to switch this around. So you can certainly see that uh, we can do one of these. This is how we served it again for you guys this morning. So a little bit of mango sauce over the top. Beautiful, nice and creamy. Uh, and then maybe we'll just do a little sprinkle of cinnamon to make it look pretty, okay? And boom, you have a breakfast item or maybe a dessert item, uh, depending on how you want to serve it, what time of day, yada, yada, yada. Make sense? Okay. Is it, is it possible to dehydrate it instead of baking it? You could, yeah. Yeah, this, the, the loaf here, 
is nice and solid. So if, whether it's in the oven or in a dehydrator, it'll work. Mm -hmm. It will not, it will stay together. Okay, so everybody sort of follow me, you know, fairly simple, nothing major about this. Okay, you guys can all go home and do this, no problem. Okay, all right. Now let's talk about how we can sort of change this up, why we would want to do that, and would it actually work and how. Sound good? Okay, so let's see if this works. So here I have, here I have the lid of the uh, pot that I used to cook the quinoa, okay? We're gonna transform this lid into a, um, to a wheel, okay? Get a nice round shape, okay? Uh, and we're gonna call this the flavor wheel, okay? What that means is this, every dish you ever make, every item you ever cook has a flavor wheel to it, uh, you just didn't know. Okay. And how this goes is, is like this. For a really good, for most successful dishes, okay, there needs to be a balance of flavor. Okay? If it, there's too much of anything, it becomes unbalanced and it becomes unpleasant. Okay? Um, maybe unpleasant is not the right word, but overwhelming. Overwhelming <laughs> to your taste buds and thus to the brain that receives the message that says this is way too salty, okay? Or way too spicy, or way too sweet, or way too bitter. Cilantro. Okay, or so, well, cilantro is different because <laughs> you have a genetic thing. That's not a taste bud thing, that's a genetic thing, okay? Um, so what happens is if I have a sweet component such as the plantains, okay? The wheel is empty, there's nothing on it, so it's balanced, okay, because there's nothing weighing it in any direction. But the moment we do the um, plantains, sweet goes on there, and it tilts the wheel, okay, and now it's unbalanced, okay. You could only eat, someone's gonna challenge me on this, I'm sure, but <laughs> you could only eat so much sweet, okay, before your brain goes, ooh, enough, you know, something else, I need something else because I'm, I'm overwhelmed, okay. So, plantain went in there, but because of the quinoa, which has this sort of very earthy, uh, what is called the umami flavor, okay? So the umami goes in there and you're like, okay, balance. There's enough sweet to go with the umami, enough umami to go with the uh, sweet, so that the whole thing is nice and balanced, okay? Then we go ahead and add the, um, uh, but actually, there was also pineapple, because remember we cooked it in pineapple, so the whole thing is actually a little bit still tilted, okay, because just the plantain and the quinoa, nice and balanced, but the pineapple is also in there, so it's actually tilted towards the sweet side. Not overly, you know, unbalanced, because within pineapple there's a little bit of acidity, okay, so it's more of a tart flavor rather than sweet, so that slight bit of acidity just tilts it back a little bit. Everybody follow me on that? Okay. So now, what we have is a situation that this is not a uh, plantain quinoa thing. It's just a slightly sweet starting point, okay? And it could be anything. It could be those um, sweet uh, mashed potatoes that I did for you earlier, okay? Or it could be, you know, berry jam or it could be um, dates okay point is you're starting out with something that is on the sweet side and you'd like to give it balance so that the dish itself will will be nice nice and you know even make sense follow me so far okay all right so I'm gonna turn this guy on and I have my onion here What will balance any dish that is sort of tilted too much in one direction is anything other than what's tilting it down, okay? So I will never be able to balance these, this dish if I use anything sweet, okay? I can use anything else and it'll work out, okay? But if I use anything that's sweet, I'm just, I'm going in the wrong direction, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take half onion 
Okay. And I'm gonna dice it up really quick for you guys. sauteing my onions and garlic. Okay. And so I just want to get a little bit of caramelization in my um, in my onions and garlic just to take that rawness out of them. Okay. While that cooks, I'll show you what I have here. I have um, uh, some Muir Glen uh, fire roasted uh, diced tomatoes, no salt to add it. Wonderful product. We hardly, hardly ever use any um, canned items, uh, but this one's actually pretty good. Uh, it's got a nice amount of flavor, uh, and again, no salt. On top of that, our other tomato products because of COVID are getting harder to find. So we're relying on these a little bit more. Okay. Now the key of this whole thing is what's in this little dish, which is a combination of onions, garlic, a little bit of oregano, but more importantly, uh, red chili flakes. Okay. So I am now going off of the sweets and I'm gonna add some spicy to it, okay? And I'm gonna work it quickly because once I add this, the people in the front row might start choking up a little bit. So I toast the spice slightly. And I add my tomatoes. And so I'm making like this sort of uh, very quick sort of spicy marinara kind of thing. Nothing, you know, earth shattering. Just a good old spicy tomato sauce. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys starting to smell it? <laughs> a little bit? Yeah, me too. It smells like home. It smells like what? Home. Home? Yeah, it's got that sort of a Italian <coughs> sort of thing. All right. Everything what? Everything good starts with onions. Everything good starts with onions. And garlic. And garlic. Yes. Yeah. All right. Sorry if I'm choking up a few of you here. Okay. <coughs> now. <coughs> Believe it or not, we can certainly go from a dessert item, okay, to more of a lunch sort of thing, okay? Uh, just by changing the sauce, okay? And let's say that you are the type of person that just does not do spicy food. They're like, ooh, man, I don't know about that. No spicy for me, okay? Well, that spicy thing uh, for you is that flavor wheel concept. Any sort of spice just tilts the wheel too much for you in one direction, okay? So. You'd be surprised how if you are not a spicy food kind of person, okay, this would actually be really nice for you because we are balancing that spiciness with the sweetness of the uh, quinoa loaf kind of thing. It doesn't have a name yet, so I'm calling it quinoa loaf. Um, let's say we decide we definitely don't want spicy, okay? but uh, we don't want sweet either, okay? Because we already have the sweet, okay? So this is not a dessert thing, but we'd like to still be able to do something else with it. Uh, what we could do is make this into a, um, cook this down till it's really nice and dried up. So it's more of a, less of a tomato sauce and it's more of a 
okay. tomato pasting combo kind of thing, okay? But at the very end, okay, I add a splash of vinegar to it, okay? So now I'm going with a sweet and sour versus a sweet and spicy, okay? Fill this blank in for me. Sweet and sour. Gives you power. <laughs> sweet and sour. Balance. Don't, you're chicken. overthinking it. Thank you. Sweet and sour chicken. Sweet and sour pork. pork. Sweet and sour Shrimp. 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 Okay. Sweet and sour has worked for hundreds of years and it will continue to work as long as we cook. All right. There's a reason why that is, it's because of that flavor wheel balance. Okay. Sweet and spicy, same thing. Okay. <coughs> a little bit of. Um, Sour and spicy, like a lime chili something. Have you ever heard of lime chili something? Yeah, okay. same concept, okay? All it is is just balancing a couple of flavors so that by themselves, okay, you might think, well, too much, but once combined, they'll be just fine. All right. Do you not serve spicy here because of we do serve spicy here, oh, okay. okay? We just don't advertise it. <laughs> okay. The reason for that is because we are a fasting facility. Uh, too much spice can be too soon for people. Yeah. Once you go home, as spicy as you like it, there's nothing wrong with spice. Uh, unless you have an issue with uh, nightshades, okay. which unfortunately takes out all peppers, okay? So, but if you... Have no issue with spicy. Would this work, the spicy one, if you wanted to use polenta instead? What would you put with the polenta? Would you still put the plantains with it to get your bread? Polenta would give me the bread all on its own. Oh, so it wouldn't have to put it in the Okay. Um, the whole thing I'm trying to tell you is that whole <coughs> flavor combination. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I, and I, I get yeah. that. So you might think, well, I don't know about pineapple and... No, I was just thinking if I didn't have... If you didn't have quinoa, quinoa, yeah. You could do um, the polenta, and polenta could do all on its own, okay? Because remember that we I used the plantains in here to give me enough starch to make the whole thing come together. Uh, polenta is all starch, so... And polenta's got a little bit of sweetness all on its own. I mean, it's... Kind of, you know, if you were to just cook it with the water, uh, to me it has like almost no flavor. Um, well, what if you maybe put a couple of dates in the water? And, Absolutely, and yes. And get, get the water sweet, and yes. then, then it would work. Mm -hmm. okay. On the flip side of that, you could make it more of a vegetable broth kind of thing, so there's okay. this onions and garlic and mushroom sort of flavor uh, with that. Um, and then you could actually top it with something sweet, believe it or not. Okay. So like a... Uh, thinking if I uh, say I have a roasted garlic polenta okay roasted garlic polenta sort of loaf kind of like this would go really well with a um, cherry chutney, chutney kind yeah. of thing okay so you know we still take the same two flavors but we're just sort of flipping right. the ingredients sure. make sense okay um, I added a little bit of basil for nothing else other than color to this plate, just like I did the sprinkle of cinnamon over here, just to give it a little bit more high appeal. Okay. But and when you add vinegar, would it be a balsamic in this? It could be anything. In so if I wasn't doing the spicy thing, uh, what I would actually like is a um, cherry vinegar here, or even a red one. Okay. You could do balsamic. You know, tomatoes and balsamic also go together very well. Okay, so I didn't get a photo in time um, when I plated these dishes in front of the audience. Uh, and so I made it again using the one I packed uh, during the demo. So the next day I uh, went ahead and um, flipped it over to a cutting board, uh, baked it, uh, and served it. And now I have uh, three people here who are going to give the opinion on the dish. So what did you guys think of the... Uh, one with the mango sauce. 
heavenly, <laughs> sweet, very flavorful, very easy going down. The quinoa um, and the banana blend made a really substantial toast, mm -hmm. which kind of surprised me. It held together like bread, and it was just slightly sweet. So then when the creamy <coughs> sweet mango sauce that's kind of decadent over the top, it makes a beautiful presentation too, by the way, but it was, it was really tasty. Okay. Well, it's the best meal that I've had since I've been here because the breads are what I've missed the most. I've enjoyed every part of the food. But when you introduce that, it really was like the bread and then to have the mango sauce on top of it, the flavor combination was unbelievable good to me. So oh, good, good. Yeah. And I don't normally like plantains and I love the plantain in this. Right. Oh good, all right. Now how did it go when you had the same um, bread but yet it was a spicy sauce? I love spicy. Spicy is, speaks to me in my heart. So it's a very spicy, tangy, it's a perfect combination. And I loved that the tomato and the onions and the savory with the basil over the top made it feel like an Italian loaf, but it was um, solid enough to feel, give you the meat mouth feel without uh, the detrimental effects of meat. Because I've been craving something that had a little bit more substance, and this does. I love Zippy too. All right. Well, I have to tell you, I was afraid of the uh, <laughs> tomato one. I, I, ketchup is hot to me. Okay, I mean, I am not a uh, South American cuisine person. Uh -huh. But when I ate that, it was the only thing I've eaten that had any tang to it that actually was good to me because it's not too hot. It has a good bite but it isn't something that lingers in my mouth for days. And it, uh, I really enjoyed it. And I would eat it on purpose again, which is saying a lot for <laughs> any spicy food. Uh, my favorite would still be the mango, but it's close. It's really good. The sweetness of the plantains in this played beautifully off of the spicy. Yeah. Right. And that's probably what it was that, that uh, helped because it, it really did uh, tamper down the the heat, but it was really good. First time in years that I've enjoyed something with any kick to it. So. Oh, great. That's All right. right. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, uh, honest opinion from three satisfied customers. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you for watching.